The input toolbar is where you're going to find the digitizing tools that you use to create the shapes that then you apply stitches to. Although it is movable and dockable, I keep mine in the upper left where it started when I started Design Shop the first time. And it's these top eight tools that I'm concerned with for the digitizing tools. And the first one is just your editing tool and you would select it and then you'd be able to click on whatever element you wanted to select. And then to the right of that, well, this is sort of a collection of linear tools. Anytime you see a little black triangle, that means you can click and hold for a half a second and then you get a fly out. So if you ever need a tool and you don't see it, check under one of the flyouts and typically they're held together in in kind of families so this is what i think of as my linear tools it's got my my walk input method which is going to be used for walk normals walk beans walk decoratives those kinds of things then you've got vector line input method so again very linear it's a line just with no stitches now this is a level dependent feature and then you've got manual stitches which it's going to create a bunch of straight lines because you can't curve a stitch. Manual stitch is every time I click, I sink a needle. And if I don't click, I don't sink a needle. So those are my kind of linear tools. And if you don't know what something is, you can hover over it and that tooltip will pop up. When I select something, the properties will show up on the property bar, but it will also be in that kind of tile, it will be the, the icon that shows. So the last used tool from a flyout will be the button that shows up. So if that's not what I want, I can click and hold, get the flyout and go back to what I wanna select. So these are my linear tools. And then below that, we have the column tools. And these come in kind of two bunches. The first one over on the left, that's going to be my column one and my column two, and they create very similar elements. They just digitize a little differently. And then to the right of those are going to be your single lines. And you can choose single line center, right or left. And those are going to digitize very much like the linear tools, but they're going to create a column shape where you have multiple lines of stitching within the form instead of just one stitch right after the other. Below that, you have your kind of fills. These are going to be your larger areas. You're going to have your traditional input method. That's going to be, I'm going to digitize the shape. If it's got a hole, I'll give it a hole. And then it's going to have entry, exit, and one stitch direction. Beside that, you've got a manual fill that's just going to be a shape. No stitches, no holes, no anything. All that's edited in later. After that, you have a unifill. It's gonna be your shape, and then any holes, and then any splices, which allows you to have sub-regions in a fill. And then it's going to allow you to have multiple stitch directions within the form. And you have the applique tool that allows you to do appliques where you digitize one outline, including holes possibly, but it creates your locator stitch, your tack down stitch, and your cover stitch. And so if you edit one, it edits all three. So that's kind of a handy tool. And then to the far right is your vector fill. And that's going to be a shape with a hole if desired, but no stitches. And some of these tools are level dependent. Below that you have insert trim. So if I need to insert a trim into a design, this is where I would do that. And then within that flyout, you have return to origin, which I have set as an option by default to go to the origin after you're done with the design, it goes back to where it started. And that's a command that the machine pays attention to. And again, that's on by default. So I don't put this in manually very often anymore. If I was doing something for a very old design, I might see it. Um, and then you have a sequin eject command, which if you're digitizing your own sequence, that's a very rarely used feature. And then to the right of that, you have cross stitch input, which is going to kind of mimic that hand cross stitch or even counted cross stitch kind of look. 
So those are kind of where your tools are for digitizing. Above that is, of course, your lettering input method, which has its own video. A lot of these tools actually have their own video as well. But let's look at selecting one of these tools. So I'm going to grab this walk normal. Now, uh, when you select a tool, the properties for that come up on the property bar. And if you start digitizing, typically you would start with a left click, which would create what we would normally call a straight point. I tend to think of them now as a sharp transition point. It's where the Bezier handles of that point are not connected. If I touch the edge of the screen, it's going to begin to auto scroll. If this gets away from you and you just want to let go of the, the element, you can hit escape and it will delete the element, but it will keep the tool selected. Notice how it's still selected. And if I left click, I'm going to start digitizing again. If I touch the edge of the screen, it's going to scroll. You can turn that feature off if you want. Um, I'm going to hit escape to delete that element. If I hit escape again, it will deselect that tool. Now, if you want to turn off auto scroll, that's under tools and options and preferences. And you just have to uncheck auto scroll. So let's do this again. I'm going to start digitizing. I'm going to start with a left click. If I right click, it's going to create a curve. And it's going to be a perfect curve until I exceed 180 degrees and then start really. So uh, yeah, oftentimes I will not exceed 180 degrees between any set of three points and it will maintain being that kind of perfect curve between those points. Notice as soon as I break that, it kind of gives that almost parabolic shape. But if I maintain that, it, it keeps that curve nice. If I left click, it's a nice sharp transition. If I click and drag, you can actually see the handle being generated. That dotted line is the handle coming off of that. So you can generate handles that way. If I want to end the element, I hit enter and it ends that element. If I want to close the element, I can hold shift when I hit enter and it will make the last input point line up with the first. So it essentially closes those linear elements. If I want to have things snap to 15 degree increments, I can hold alt and it will constrain that line angle, which makes digitizing more rectilinear shapes a little bit easier. So those are kind of your basics for the input toolbar. Each of those tools, the, the walk tools, the column tools, the fill tools, they all have their own video. So you can go into those videos for a little more depth on how to use those individual tools.
Well, this is sort of a collection of linear tools. Anytime you see a little black triangle, that means you can click and hold for a half a second and then you get a flyout. So <coughs> if you ever need a tool and you don't see it, check under one of the flyouts and typically they're held together in in kind of families so this is what i think of as my linear tools it's got my my walk input method which is going to be used for walk normals walk beans walk decoratives those kinds of things then you've got vector line input method so again very linear it's a line just with no stitches now this is a level dependent feature and then you've got manual stitches which it's going to create a bunch of straight lines because you can't curve a stitch. Manual stitch is every time I click, I sink a needle. And if I don't click, I don't sink a needle. So those are my kind of linear tools. And if you don't know what something is, you can hover over it and that tooltip will pop up. When I select something, the properties will show up on the property bar, but it will also be in that kind of tile, it will be the, the icon that shows. So the last used tool from a flyout will be the button that shows up. So if that's not what I want, I can click and hold, get the flyout and go back to what I want to select. So these are my linear tools.